They'll face Jordan Montgomery, who's a much better pitcher in Arlington than he was in St. Louis. And his last four starts, 27 innings, two earned runs. A bunch of the Rangers told me this is the best he's ever thrown in his career right now. And he pulls that one down the left field line and a diving catch made by Evan Carter. This is the most underrated part about the Rangers. Their defense, especially in the outfield. Evan Carter, 21 years old, makes that play. Bunks again and pops it up. Montgomery, wow. a diving catch. What a play. Well, because Sean, if that lands, that's a big problem for the Texas Rangers. That's a hit and a run scored. So we talked about the Ranger defense. We didn't talk about how good a defender Jordan Montgomery's been because he's made two. That is a tremendous play. Opponents in those last four starts hit just one for 14 against him with runners in scoring position. That's the situation again. The runner goes from first and Pinto swings and misses. And what a job by Montgomery to strike out of Pinto to get out of the inning. He strikes out here and Montgomery has his second strikeout. They come back to back. He got Pinto in the second. Marco swings. It's a foul tip. Jordan Montgomery another strikeout in his third. He struck him out. Line drive caught by Young. Going to his left, his glove arm fully extended, and he took a hit away from Margot. Again, the metrics are not kind to him defensively, but you ask the guys on this team, and they'll tell you he's a way above average defensive third baseman. Off speed curveball. And he struck him out with an off-speed curve away. What a performance by Jordan Montgomery. One of the most important parts of this Texas Rangers season. The runner goes from first. He'll have to get back fast. Margot the catch. That should be deep enough to score the run. Tavares did get back to first and across the plate with the first run of this postseason. Nathaniel Lowe. On an RBI on a sacrifice fly by the 25-year-old rookie, Josh Young, seeing his first career postseason action. That's off the glove of Pinto to the backstop, and a run scores. Seeger across the plate. It's two to nothing. And again, the Rays continue to help the Texas Rangers offense. Well, we've told you three times what a good defensive catcher Pinto is, and he is, but he had no shot at this one. The ball just got way away from glass now. Treated by a line drive, sinking fast. That'll fall in front of Siri, and it's off his glove and up into the air. Around the score, Carter, and now the throw goes into the dugout. Simeon in as well. This ball looked like it could get caught, and Evan Carter said this is not getting caught, and he took off and forced the throw to third, and again, another sloppy play by the Rays. Pretty well hit, but that should end the ball game. Tavares the catch, and game one of this wild card series goes to the Texas Rangers. A combined six hitter for Montgomery, who pitched the first seven, and then Chapman and LeClerc with an inning each. Nathan Avaldi, a 12-game winner in an All-Star in his first season with the Texas Rangers. And the pitch, he struck him out with a splitter. A Rosarena fans for the first out of the ball game for Nathan Avaldi. He hits a double play ball to short. Seager to Simeon. That's as, early, as easy as it gets early in the ball game. He throws strike three on the outside corner. And no argument from Paredes. Swing and a miss at a pitch down and away. Meade strikes out. Navaldi is fan three through two innings. And he struck him out. Four strikeouts through eight batters for Nathan Navaldi. Swing and a miss for Pinto. Three straight strikeouts and four out of five now for Evaldi. Swing and a miss at that off speed curveball. Pareda <laughs> strikes out. Double play ball to second. Simeon, Seeger, low. That ends the inning. Nathan Avaldi pitching a shutout. They're up 5 0. And they haven't had a runner reach second base in this series since the sixth inning of yesterday. That is eight innings and counting. Bochi takes the ball from Avaldi. Magnificent today. He departs with his team leading 7 1 in the seventh inning. There's a long fly ball to left, way back, and gone. 
First home run of this series for either team. Adolis Garcia with a bomb way back into the left field seats. And the Rangers lead one to nothing, 416 feet. Well, this team really took off offensively when Young and Garcia came off the injured list in September, and Jess, he did not miss this one. Yesterday at 14 in the regular season, 3-2 pitch, a little pop-up, long run for low. He can run hard, and he doesn't get it. And a run will score. Tavares has scored. On his way to third is Young, and he is safe. As the ball gets away from Paredes, and he was probably safe even if Isak was able to handle it. But Lowe can really run, but he didn't get it. There's a drive to right off the bat of Evan Carter, and what a postseason he is having. A 21-year-old rookie with a two-run homer. And it is four to nothing, Texas. 21 years old. He's batted six times in this series. He's reached base each time. We saw the patience in the last at bat. He ended up walking. This one, he's sitting up and in and absolutely crushes it. He hits a high chopper. It's going to bring in another run. The only play for Eflin is at first. Seeger in to make it five to nothing, Rangers. Lowe has a run batted in. And this is much more like the Texas offense that we've seen. They're putting the ball in play. They're hitting with power. And here, Nate Lowe doesn't get much of this, but it's such a productive out because it scores a run. There's a shot toward the gap in left center. That's going to bring home another run. Simeon's first hit of this series is a double. And Texas leads six to nothing. To repeat, the Rangers led the league in runs scored this year. They led the league in walks. And here, Jesse he gets a ball in the middle of the plate. This is a pitch that's supposed to be middle away. Marcus Simeon's able to get around it, get barrel on it. And there's a drive to right field. That will one hop the wall. Seeger's on his way to second as Simeon crosses the plate. It's another double for Seeger. His second of the ball game, third of the series. After an American League leading 42 two base hits in the regular season. And the route is on. It's seven to nothing. Restful the T-ball that he's ready to celebrate with his team. Strike three. Fastball at the knees. A borderline pitch. Goes the Rangers way. And they go. Question was who is going to get game one? It'll be Andrew Heaney. He's going to sling it from a different angle. He's going to rely on high fastballs, inside fastballs, changeups, and sliders. 3 2 again. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Heaney goes with the elevated fastball, which has been his bread and butter as far as strikeouts go this year, and that's his first punch out here this afternoon. That is going to do it for Andrew Heaney. Hicks is a switch hitter that is way better against lefties. Yep. Look who finds himself in the middle of this opportunity here. It is Evan Carter. He hooks one down the line. That's a base hit for Carter. And the 21-year-old's in the middle of it again. On his way to second with a double. Garcia's in to score. And the Rangers are on the board first. He is way above his years of, can we say, youth of 21. And he's playing the game at a different level right now. Strike one and a high fastball to Jonah Heim. And now it's Heim with a base hit to left center. Carter's given the wave. Mullins throw goes into second, and it's two to nothing, Texas. Three consecutive hits here in the fourth. You try to prevent when you're facing the Rangers, you try to prevent the three ball count and the three run or more inning. The, we call it the crooked inning because they can put up three runs or more in just about as good as anybody. Dunning last pitched on Sunday. He started in Seattle, went three and a third on three days rest and allowed one run. Now here is the uh, veteran Frazier, two and one. Pitch breaking ball, that's popped up. First base side, it's playable for Nate Lowe. Behind the bag, he's got it. And Dunning has put out the fire. One run home for the Orioles, one hit. So they go from Coulomb to Webb. Josh Young flies it to center field. Mullins is going back on the track at the wall. It's gone. And the rookie out of the eighth spot goes deep to center field. Rangers up 3-1. Well, he was the one of the Rangers rolling before he got hurt. Missed a long period of time. Tied with the Twins for the most home runs in the AL this year. Back-to-back -back walks from Chapman. Chopper left side. Young picks it, goes to second one, and turns a double play. Two outs, two balls, two strikes. Hayes bluffing at third, and here comes the pitch. He struck him out swinging. 
with a high fastball at 101.4 miles an hour. Chapman walked the first two batters and then got out of it. No runs, no hits. The tying run left at third, and we're going to the ninth. Plate. There goes Henderson. Throw from Heim. He got him. Jonah Heim throws out Gunnar Henderson. Best in baseball during the regular season at controlling the running game. Does it right here. Just up Orioles. Career high, 13 home runs this season for him. He's a cue shot to third. Young, who's been the man today, ends game one. Texas three, Baltimore two. Strides home with a one-two. A fastball is lifted to left center field. Hayes is sprinting back into the gap. A diving attempt from Mullins, but he can't get it. Lowe's in to score. Young trying to score from first. Relay from Mateo's not in time. Out of the ninth spot in the order, Leone Tavares has tied this game with a two-run double. See, he wanted the ball up, and it would have been unhittable, but down the hitter had a chance, and he just drops the barrel of the bat to it on a 98-mile-an-hour fastball and gets rewarded by splitting the gap. Three consecutive change-ups. This one's put in plain and scores a run, and it's an infield hit. With that lollipop of a throw over there to first. Three to two, Texas is in front. This one's right at the squirt off the bat, right? And then he gets it, and he's almost stuck because now he has to throw the ball over the runner and not in time. And, man, these Rangers. His 1-1 one, one. is hit hard into center field. Base hit Garcia. Seager makes the turn, comes in to score. A four spot for Texas. Well, we said they mastered the three ball counts and they actually have the crooked number three. His fastball down doesn't play the same as his fastball up. And they've taken advantage of it a couple times now and four to two just like that. Back to the high fastball and Heim swats it to the left side. Base hit. Five runs for the Rangers in the second and they lead it five to two. Excellent hitting and exactly where they wanted the ball. But by starting the runner, the shortstop was gone. Yeah, Jacob Webb, who gave up a home run to Josh Young yesterday, comes in with the bases loaded to face Mitch Garber. That ball is hit in the air to deep left field. Hayes going back at the wall. It's gone. It's a grand slam. Mitch Garber breaks it open for the Rangers, who have nine runs over the first three innings. The new wall couldn't stop this one. And up in the zone and up and away. Bouncing ball to third. Henderson stabs it, steps on the bag, running throw, picked by Mountcastle. Beautiful plays on both ends. Run comes to the back door, 10 to 4, Texas. Yeah, if that play was a little different, you typically are going to try to prevent the run at home being down by six. Get 100? Yes. Grounder to a drawn in Mateo, couldn't get it out of his glove, and Young's going to come in to score. Yeah, prior to this season, there had been two leadoff men to drive in 100 in baseball history. Jose LeClerc fires. And the Texas Rangers take both games in Baltimore. They've got a 2-0 series lead over the top team in the AF. The 6-foot, 2-inch, 215-pound right-hander from Alvin, Texas, Nate Evaldi. He gets a chase and a ball in the dirt and has his first strikeout. His 0-2. Former World Series MVP. Golf swing, right field. Forget about it. Rangers strike first. Tone setter, tone set. First postseason home run this year for Seager. That was uh, a strong man sitting in a rocking chair hitting a home run. Oof. And that's what makes him so unique. No stride, toe tap, just so strong. Again, if he stayed healthier, he would be pushing harder for that MVP this year. Garcia gets up on top of that ball, hammers it to left field. What a swing! It's gone! On this pitch right here, talked about getting it inside. They wanted to get it up, but that is not the place that it absolutely went to. It was out over the plate where he could get his hands. That location by a foot is the big difference for Garcia and the Rangers do what they do. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Another one-two pitch. Got it. With a 
50 splitter. Got him. Two punch outs in the 361. Eight home runs and 20 RBIs in 17 games. Three, four, and five against Nathan Evaldi. Six-one game. Anthony Santander to Seeger. Shows off the glove right there. Using that six-four length. Timing is everything. Good producing, Pete Macheska. First pitch out to huge. And they get one shifted over. And the big shortstop covers some ground. Oh, 0 for 2 today. 1 for 10 in this series. First one getting the hold of one. He finally finds it in a big well, you're talking about him having a hard time getting the barrel to bat to the ball, but we mentioned that 15 pitch at back. Maybe that got him going a little bit. Fastball inner half and look at his hands and the timing, and you can just tell, finally, batting practice puts on a display. In the game, they were beating him with fastballs. One over the middle part of the plate. For Nate, five in the ball game. And that's in there for a call, third strike. Nathan Avaldi, he gets a curtain call after seven innings and just one run. Well, here's a tight situation where Hicks can really make this interesting. Last time LeCourt came into this situation, the Orioles jumped on the first couple pitches. Bouncing ball to first. Lowe's got it. Feeds LeClerc, and that's the inning. The Orioles leave the bases loaded as Jose LeClerc has put out the fire. No runs in a hit. Three men left. We're going to the bottom of the eighth. And the Texas Rangers are going to the championship series. Bruce Bochy's club sweeps the 101 win Baltimore or 28 year old all star catcher bangs the ball to right center field it's down in front of Dubon who's got a good arm but his throw won't have a chance to get Carter Texas one Houston nothing on a base hit from Jonah Heim a well rested Heim makes it one nothing. He's got a little hitting streak going in his postseason career I believe that's six now and I think for the Texas Rangers this is what we've seen in the postseason. First big chance for the Astros. Bases loaded down a run in the fourth. The one-two pitch. Sticks with a fastball and strikes him out. Jordan Montgomery gets out of the bases loaded jam, keeping the Rangers in front. Back after a word from your local Fox station. Oh, the one-two pitch. Is it hard? Deep right field, and Leone Tavares takes Verlander deep. That time of year where names are made, and how about Leone Tavares out of the nine spot, hitting a home run against Justin Verlander. Fastball up, watch it just click. See how he dropped the barrel down, and he knew. That was connected swing on a pitch. If you showed all the home runs in baseball, they're gonna be in that area for the most part. The two on. Fly ball, left center field. Back goes low, onto the track, at the wall. Let's see. You get a chance to look at his feet and see if he retouched right there. When you go past the bag, you have to touch the bag going back on a ball that is caught by an outfielder. The call on the field's overturned. The runner is out on appeal. Texas will retain their challenge. Castro is down to their last strike. Leclerc's 3 2 pitch. Got him! And the Texas Rangers keep on rolling with game one in the championship series, two to nothing over the Astros. Well, you started by asking me in the open. This is going to be an epic series. Rangers threatening early. Little tapper back to Valdez. He juggles. He throws wide. Throw it in from Fromber Valdez. Leading to the first run of the game. Adolis Garcia. Packs the first one into right field. Base hit. Seeger in to score. Grossman to third. Two to nothing just like that. 
Garver now yanks the line drive into left field. That'll drop in for another Texas hit, and it's three to nothing. Punches a base hit the other way, it does low. Well. Here comes Garcia. Brantley up with it. His throw is cut off and a full spot in the first. There's a fly ball to left field, and Jonah Heim hits it out. There's that power you're talking about. It's not just the singles. Plenty of sack in that bat as well. And the Rangers get the run right back. First postseason home run for Jonah Heim, and it's 5-1 Texas. Well, again, now that's going to cause Dusty to think about his bullpen. He's hoping that his starter can get locked in, but the approach the Rangers have had against Valdez has been impressive. Fastball naturally in his game. Back in play Young from the far corner of the diamond. Got him. Josh Young, what a player this kid is. The rookie takes a hit away from Chaz McCormick. These guys can play defense. They're not all hit. And their defense is winning them a couple games already in the postseason. Here's the 1 1. Ground ball left side. Young's got it. Juggle recovers and steps on the bag to end the eighth. The second home run of the day from Jordan Alvarez as the Astros back to within one. 3 1. Fly ball center field. Tavares comes on. The call, the catch, the win in game two. Nathan Evaldi, the best reason for the Rangers to feel good about their chances to keep their season going. He's not going to be scared, I can promise you that. Uh, the one thing is, he knows his hands are full with a very hot lineup. His 3 2 is cut on and miss, and he does turn it up a fastball to 97. 3 2. Okay. Strikes him off with a fastball to the knees. On this 2-2, it is a cutter to the corner, and Brevin watches strike three. Here's what I'm talking about with the cutter when I say turn the corner. When it has this little late break, see how he's behind the ball? It looks like a fastball coming out of his hand. It only needs to break about three to four inches, and that's all it takes for a hitter to say, oh, shoot, it's too late, can't do anything with it. Baldy trying to do it again in the postseason. Twelve years okay. in the big leagues, some of them ruined by injuries, a lot of them good, but he has become a different guy and made his name in October. His one Two to Brantley. It is swung on and missed. Third good splitter in that at bat. That's falling off the table. When you see that split action and you see the hitter is swinging at a great hitter, swinging at a pitch like that, you know it has great late movement. It tumbles away from the barrel off that fastball delivery. It was a fastball. And then it's a cutter and it's popped up. And after hitting Martin Maldonado, Nathan Avaldi goes one, two, three against the top of the Houston lineup. Avaldi was the best pitcher in the American League this season with runners in scoring position. We've seen that show up time and again in this postseason form. Jeremy Pena with two away. Browns one to see good short. It's been weak contact all over the place from Pena. Astros get one back. Three-two game after six. Here's a two-one. El Tube pokes it right side. Over Simeon. For his second hit of the game. Time run aboard in the seventh. Well, here he comes here. So Rodney goes six and a third. He's going to leave the game with the lead, but he's going to leave it up to the bullpen that has been the wild card all along for these Rangers. And the Astros lead. Mitch Garber swings at the first one that he sees, sends it the other way, and deep on the first pitch of the inning, he hits it out and ties the game. Mitch Garver with an ambush of Valdez, and it's 1-1 just like that. Had a game plan, and there's the first Ranger. Remember I said who's going to go to right center, center to right center, and he got rewarded with a home run. I don't know if there'll be a carryover effect, but that's a great sign and a much-needed run. Jonah High got an 0-1 pitch. Drives one the other way. Tucker's going back towards the corner at the wall. A leap, and it's gone. Just over the glove of Tucker. Two home runs for the Rangers the other way. And they've taken the lead in game six. You see how he's floating? Oh, wow. Yes, he could have got that. What a big moment here for Texas. I mean, that's inches. And that is time second against Valdez in this series. Josh Spores. Yeah, he's been really, really good. And a very patient hitter at the plate in Brantley. He's grounded to second for Simeon. He'll go to second for one. On the first. Lee digs it out and a double play. Josh Spores induces a 4-6-3 twin killing. The home run hitters in this game for the Rangers. Ball. Mitch Garver on 3-1. Garver rips a line drive to the left field corner. It's a ball. Carter's in with the insurance. 
Garver's got a three hit game and Texas has a 4 2 lead. Garver's having his moment and couldn't come at a better time. He gets that breaking ball over the plate. Easy double. This is John Singleton. Bases loaded. Two gone. Eighth inning of game six. Got him swinging. Jose LeClerc gets out of the bases loaded champ and finds redemption one game later. Game again finds their superstar, Corey Seager. Bases loaded. Stanek's on to face him, John. Oh, oh he gets hit, and they do the hard way to make Go. it five. Stanek comes in, misses badly with his first pitch, misses badlier with his second. Uh, that's not going to feel good on where he got hit, but it's going to feel better if they can win this game. Chance for more here. Bases loaded, one gone in the ninth. Stanek's one one. He is thrilled on a line. Left field and gone! Adolis Garcia makes his statement, and the Rangers have their sights set on game seven. Well, it was. We on the train tracks, but it was special. Third straight game with a home run for Adolis Garcia. The Rangers have broken it open. They lead nine to two. Brantley here, two gone in the ninth. Seven in this all Texas championship series, and isn't it fitting that these teams that tied during the regular season at 90 and 72 still can't decide things through six games? This is how it's supposed to be. On this 1 0 from Javier, Seager hits a high fly ball, deep right field, a bomb in the first. Right away, a statement. Right away, shock value. I talked about can the Rangers get on top of the fastball? They have an all series. Watch where this pitch is. It is at the top of the zone. He crushes it. This was a planned attack. And his wife, Maddie, watching that thing fly out. No question about where it was headed. Here's his payoff. Garcia gets up on it, drives it to left. Back it goes. Off the wall. Carter read it well. Here he comes. Two to nothing. Texas in the first. Adonis Garcia's tear continues. I'm not so sure he would have got a double, but he was admiring it as if it was a home run. A good read to your point about Carter. And again, this has been an emotional series for him, an emotional game seven, and he thought he had it. Here comes a 2-2. Garber lifts it to center field. McCormick a step back at first. Now comes on, and that ball's going to fall. In center field, it falls, and Garcia's headed home. The throw is not in time. It's three to nothing, Rangers. Garcia finds himself in position to take advantage of that lapse in defense thanks to his stolen base and everything going the Rangers way in the first game of game seven. Garcia starts the third and drives one the other way down the line and it's fair he's got another. He does. Adolis Garcia owning October playing the villain role to perfection and it's four Texas. This might be one of the best at bats of his career. Two fastballs painted away for strikes. He took a couple and then the same fastball away. That's a very good pitch that he just hit like a left hander hooking it down the line. Carter pulls one down the line. That is fair. The kid comes through. Young's in the score. So is Simeon. Two run double for 21 year old Evan Carter. Well, we talked about it, the heartbeat of a 21-year-old with a chance to send his team to the World Series. Would this be the hit? Sure looks like it. Rangers have taken the runs right back. His 2-0 is over the plate and grounded through the left side, a base hit. Seager's in. Here comes Carter. He'll score without a throw. Adonis Garcia is 3-for-3 three three and is knocked in four. It's 8-2, to two, Texas. Yeah, I, I, again, they were pitching to try and strike him out, but you're talking to a totally different hitter right now and a man on a mission. On a 3-1, low, swings, and it's a highliner. Deep right field, tucking back. At the wall and gone! 
Low strokes a home run just out of the reach of Tucker. Double digits in game seven for Texas. Well, like I said, if they can get him going, wow, does their lineup get long? He hit a hanging breaking ball just wow. through the webbing. Conviction and then said something quite impressive. Tom, take it away. Here's the fly ball. Hold on one second. Back goes Brantley to the wall. And Adelis Garcia has hit another home run. Impossible. His fifth in the last four games. He owns Houston. John, get your MVP ballot, Betty. Already penciled in. Oh, you can use marker. Grounded a second. Two years removed from losing 100. The Rangers have won the pennant. And they will play in the World Series for the first time since 2011. Their first real chance to make a new World Series memory after the heartbreak of that 2011 season. And plenty of heartbreak along this path that they've been able to overcome, that they've responded to. And they're the champions of the American League toppling the Houston Astros. And uh, let's hear from the fans for the American League champion, Texas Rangers, everybody. Let's have some fun. We've got the majority owner, Ray Davis, here. COO Neil Liebman is here. Executive VP and General Manager Chris Young, Manager Bruce Bochy, and the rest of the Texas Rangers. And Ray, why don't we start this off? This is the American League Championship Trophy. It's all yours. Pick it on up, will you? Well, Ray, let me ask you. Obviously, you were here in the same position in 2011, the last time this organization won a pennant. You've had some tough times, no doubt. But now to be back on top, what does that feel like to you? It's been a long wait for our fan base and our team, and I'm so proud of all of them. What do you have to say to these fans who came on the road to support you? Thank you for all your support. You deserve it. What do you want? You want to pass that around? Everyone get a little feel for it? See why come on in. Here's the general manager, Chris Young. And Chris, you've won as a player. We've seen that. What's it feel like to now win and see this team go to the World Series as an executive? Well, KB, I can't explain how proud I am of this group, um, our coaching staff, our entire organization. We've had some hard times recently. Those are over. These players have deserved this. They've brought us to where we are now. Boats, you came out of retirement for this. I love you all. We're going to keep going. How proud are you when you see you've rebuilt this organization, you've rebuilt this roster, and you see guys that have been here last year, the big pickups, of course, with Simeon and Seager, and then the trade deadline pickups, they all contributed. How proud does that make you? Well, it makes me extremely proud, but this started before I came along with Ray Davis and John Daniels and everybody else in our front office and organization who started the foundation for this. And uh, these guys have made this happen. And Boach coming out of retirement, I just can't say enough about everybody here. This is a complete team effort, and uh, I, I can't explain it, KB. Thank you. Go enjoy it, CY. Thank you. Chris Young, everyone. And now the manager, Bruce Bochy. Bochy going back to the World Series, baby. Unbelievable, unbelievable. I tell you what, I couldn't be more honored to manage such a great team like this. It, I mean, the, you know, for CY to call me last uh, November, I, I I didn't know if I'd get back in or not. And here I am. I, I know how blessed I am, but I can't thank these guys enough. Ray Davis uh, with his commitment. CY from the get-go had his vision. Here we are. Boach, you were talking about it. You know, the, the last regular season series, a lot of teams that could have hurt them and it could have gone the other way, it galvanized this team, that trip to Seattle. How did you do it? How did you come back from that to get and win a pennant? Well, they've done it all year. We've had our streaks. We've had our injuries. They, they keep, uh, keep getting up. And, you know, to come in here and beat such a great club like Houston, and congrats on their year, but it's great to be wearing the horns in Texas. Bochi champ, lift it up, Bruce. Well, we have one more thing to do before we let these guys go party. 
It's the American League Championship MVP. There is no doubt. Adolis Garcia, come get your hardware. Adolis, first of all, congratulations. Boy, it was fun watching you. It felt like you were going to hit everything out of the park. How did it feel to you, this hot streak? You have the most RBIs for anyone ever in a playoff series. Uh, I want to say thank God. Uh, thank you to my family, all the fans. This team right here, we are a family, and they push me every day to play hard. And that's why I just made just adjustment today. Just try to don't, don't do too much. And if it's not for the love of all my teammates, man, this can be possible. Thank you. Adolis, one more before we let you go. Game five, that crazy game, and of course you get hit by a pitch, and it seemed like that inspired you. Did that get you guys going? Did that light the fire? I mean, we, we stayed together. Uh, we knew it, like, it's going to be like, a great fight, like hard, and we just push. That's it. You were amazing. Congrats. You were Thank you. Adolis Garcia, the MVP of the ALCS. These Rangers can match 20 runs over the last two games of the championship series. Oh, right center field. That's going to split the game and hit off the wall. Seager read it well. He heads for the plate, and it's Evan Carter, 21 years old, starting the scoring in the World Series. Watch how solid his hands are connected, and he gets the barrel of the bat and splits the gap. I mean, he's so cool, this team is going to get to know him. Gallon to Garcia with a 3-1 pitch. Yeah. Lines right, base hit left field. Carter can fly. He heads home. It's 2 to nothing, Texas. I would say he was locked in. Very controlled, short to the ball. We've seen him pick get really big with his swings. There's a breaking ball right down the middle. And see how connected he was to it. And two solid contacts now in a row, giving the Rangers a 2-0 lead. Tries again. And walks him to tie the game. Struck out the first two, and then four consecutive two-out base runners, three of them coming on walk. I tell you, he threw some great pitches in that at bat, and it's going to seem like a bummer to walk in the tying run. But I, it, given the circumstances and that at bat by Garver, this is a great time to go and settle your pitcher down and go, all right, no big deal, tie game. And gave Arizona the lead with a leadoff home run last inning. It's a big bouncer right side. This won't be an easy play. And Lowe recovering Dunningham just in time. Race to the bag, and Dunning and Lowe make it happen to finish off the Diamondbacks in the fifth, but they add a run. Three consecutive innings with a run for Arizona to chase a volley before this. Here's a spinner off the end of the bat. Simeon ranging into short left field. What a play! Marcus Simeon for the second out of the seventh. Wow, what a play right here. Speedy runner. Ball's got kind of a cue ball. This is outstanding on both ends. Just beating them again. And so Bradford does his job coming out of the Rangers bullpen. Hooks this one on a line to right field. Garcia's back and leap and a catch. Rangers fans, 12 years after game six, are saying, that looks a little more like it. Going back, making the play. Passing those seatbelts to the bottom of the ninth. Nine, one, and two coming up. Two for the tie, three for the win. Could tie it with one swing. It's tied! The game is tied 5-5. Five, five. A two-run homer in Seawald as his first blown save of the postseason. And it's a new game in the bottom of the ninth. Corey knew the moment he hit it, it was a fastball that may have been above the zone. That pitch was up, and he crushed it and displayed the kind of emotion that we saw when he homered in the first inning of Game 7 at Houston. Adonis Garcia sends on the other way. That sends Carroll back. He's at the wall, and the legend grows! Adonis Garcia wins game one! to the day that game six 
became synonymous with heartbreak. Game one becomes synonymous with Adolis Garcia. The Rangers tie it in the ninth on a Seager home run. They win it in the 11th. And of course, it was a bonus. One swing and they're dancing around, but it's all about that hit by pitch the time before. You wondered if that was going to have anything to do with his swinging the bat. It wasn't. And he went to right field. That's how strong he is. He took a low sinking pitch and hit it like a left handed pull hitter. And what a moment and what a comeback win for the Rangers. It's kind of in general what you would expect a rehab in the postseason would be. What should we be looking for tonight to know if he's figured it out? Fastball command and that slider that he hasn't had really locked in. And I think for tonight, the Diamondbacks should be pretty aggressive. It's not the perfect command that Scherzer has, but he's a strike thrower. So one out base runner here and Gabriel Moreno started the scoring in game two with a home run stands in. And there's a swing and a ground ball to Josh Young at third. He throws to second for one on to first. In time a double play five four three. Josh Young ranging far to his left to come up with that one and fired a strike to Marcus Simeon for the pivot at second base. Side is to the right center field. That's a base hit. Stopped at third as Walker runs through the stop sign. Garcia guns him down. Tony Paris Chica giving a clear stop sign to Christian Walker who just barreled through it. And one of the best arms in baseball makes him pay. Yeah, I stopped looking at him when I saw the stop sign. I really did. He just saw the waving and he never looked back up. And it's too late at that point. One and one here to the left handed hitting Thomas. Here's a comebacker off the back of Scherzer. It deflects to Young. His throw across in time for the out. A terrific recovery there by Josh Young to adjust to that ball, deflecting off of Scherzer's backside. It's a 1 5 3 out, and we're done here in the second. Despite two Diamondbacks hits, Arizona fails to score. Texas also unbeaten this postseason on the road. Eight and all. Oh, Corey Seager smashes a ball. Down line. Goodbye. Three to nothing, Texas. Second of the World Series for Corey Seager. And boy, his home runs get out in a hurry. He hasn't seen a ton of pitches to hit. But the ones he's seen, they're not getting back. Took a first pitch changeup and all right. Here again comes that man, Marcus Simeon, who flied out his first time. Under a third, two out, two one. Lifted the left center field. Thomas on the move, not going to get there. Marcus Simeon finally comes through with a base hit to left center field. Rangers strike first in game three. So that pitch came back into his sweet spot, and he was able to get the ball to the left center side. See how he pulls his hands in, keeps that barrel through the zone and he got a mistake and he made the most of it one and two the count and the pitch is swinging a miss and he got him with a, a cut fastball and so Longoria is out on strength and the first strikeout victim here for Max Scherzer pitching now with a lead for the first time tonight well, right guy up for the Diamondbacks they did a lot of two out damage in the last game yes there was a day off in between but well, Texas flipped the script on him the previous inning with three two out runs. Swing and the ball lifted into left field. Carter on the move toward the line starts to slow and makes the one hand grab to get Marte for the final out in the inning. So a shutdown inning posted by Max Scherzer. No runs, no hits. Well, we got a big story here in Phoenix. This is Scherzer getting ready to come out to throw his warm up pitches just a minute ago. And how in the world is he even going to step onto the field? We went out there and started to try and warm up. And then the training staff and Bruce Bochy said, no, this ain't happening. Yeah, it looked like, you know, I know the ball that got hit off of his back wasn't the contributing factor. But I'm telling you right now, the way he was acting with his lower back, assuming that's exactly what was going on and just knowing mannerisms of a pitcher, you know he's frustrated, but he did the right thing. Run, he hit against him. On the first pitch, smacks one to the ground. Seeger gets there, out of his glove to second. In time at first. Clerk. Finishes off a one, two, three, nine. It is Andrew Heaney, who they signed as a starter, which he was for most of the season. 
Moved into the bullpen at the start of September and has worked in both roles so far this postseason. Hopefully he can give him three to four innings. That's a strikeout of Carroll for the first out. The old hanging changeup. That's not where you <laughs> want to throw, but it's hard to hit. Swings through it. Back-to-back -back K's for Heaney. Hitting both Carroll and Moreno. Grounds this one to first. Backhand low. Race to the bag. One by Heaney. Just barely. And a 3-2 to Tommy Pham. Right is there. taken for strike three. Well, that was a perfect pitch. 3-2 locked him up. It's the last pitch I think Tommy Pham thought was coming. On this 2-2 pitch, Young drives the ball to right center field. That's down. It bounces through the gap all the way to the wall. Josh Young headed for second. He'll stop there with a leadoff double. First base hit of the game for the Rangers is a double from the rookie Young. Well, this guy is so good when he stays right center. So much room in this outfield. And a level swing. Not trying to pull it and going where it was pitched. On a 2 2, Tavares takes a change in the dirt, kicks away. Play at the play won't happen. Young's in to score. Rangers strike first in game four. The only way that Young scores on that play is you've got to be thinking ahead of time. Once he saw the ball get past Moreno, you go, and he was able to score. So the Rangers are on the board. A leadoff double, productive out, and then a wild pitch. Who hits it hard through the middle into center field for a base hit. Travis Jankowski getting his chance and taking advantage. He's a high contact guy, not a ton of power, but when he hits it, he can utilize his speed. And this one he hits right off the end of the bat, up the middle. Two on, two out, a one-two pitch. Simeon pulls one down the line, hooking fair into the corner. Tavares in to score. Jankowski in as well as it picks away. Simeon's on his way to third. He's in there. Marcus Simeon for the second game in a row comes through, and it's three to nothing, Texas. Well, one of the risks you run in a bullpen game is that you just don't know the next guy that comes in. Are they going to have it or are they not? And tonight, Miguel Castro did not. Now Seeger to right center field, way back there, and gone again. Corey Seeger does it again. His third hit of this World Series is his third home run of this World Series. No one's going to face a reliever more than once, right? But you're going to see a reliever more than once in these games. The more the hitters see the relievers in a series, the better it gets for the hitters. Rangers hit for the cycle as a team in that second inning and score five runs. Already the fourth pitcher for the Diamondbacks. It's Luis Frias, who's pitched well in this postseason. A couple of scoreless outings in the World Series already. Comes home to Jonah Hine. And Hine grounds the first one to Walker. Has a hard time getting it out of his glove, and it's an error on the gold glover. Even with all the offensive issues Walker's had of late, that is something that you rarely see. Normally so sure-handed at first. And now Jankowski who singled in his first World Series at back. Into center field, Jankowski comes through again. Kicks away from Thomas. Two runs are in. A two-run double from the guy getting his shot. Travis Jankowski making his World Series debut in place of the injured Garcia. He's two for two with two runs knocked in. Jankowski, I mean, my goodness. And life change quickly for Jankowski. He's got the Rangers ahead 7 nothing, And now Simeon crushes a ball back to left field. Gurry out of the wall. Goodbye. It is a route in game four. Marcus Simeon came into the game with three RBIs this postseason. He's got five in three innings tonight. And they do it again with two outs. Back to back, five run innings. All ten runs with two out. And this one is popped up shallow right. Simeon angling out. Jankowski coming on. The two collide. Simeon tumbles. And Jankowski makes the catch in foul ground. Hard tumble, though, by Simeon. He gets up, rubbing his arm, slowly trotting back toward the dugout. Pretty sure that Jankowski made the catch. Indeed, he did. And given that he had a collision there with Simeon, that makes the catch all the more impressive. Bottom of the Texas lineup here. Jonah Heim leading off. Still looking for that first hit of this World Series. Over 12. High fly ball to deep right field. Jonah Heim's first hit of the World Series is a home run. 
And it's 11 to 1, Texas. Third of the postseason for Holly. So the third home run of this game for the Rangers. Out homering Arizona in this series, 7 to 2. And the clerk got it. Give that ball to Jonah. Nice keepsake. Christian Walker. Hot fly, foul ground. That is caught by Lowe. And that does it. 33 year old from Elvin, Texas, Nathan Avaldi. He's made five starts this postseason, and Texas has won them all, especially to this point. Ground ball to short, and Seeger's there. Drawing in infield, cuts it off. Carroll's still at third, two out. First and third, two out. On this own line, he hits it hard. Seeger is short with a backhand play, goes to second. And Longoria yanks the line drive to left field, then Carter comes on to get. Evan Carter takes a hit away from Longoria. Two gone in the second. Another 2 2 pitch. Walker's down on strikes. Fastball blown by him. Two gone. I mean, this is after a split. He throws a fastball right down the middle. Right down the middle, 97. So you get him in between and you get him, well, a little bit out of third. Now Fam with two out. Ground ball to short and Seeger's got it. And they again waste an opportunity. The payoff. Got out of it again with a fastball to the corner. It is still nothing, nothing. Nathan Avaldi out of four jams in four innings. Marte at first, one out, one two pitch. In there for strike three. Wow, what a pitch there. He just stayed away and panned it away. No bad runner in scoring position in every inning. This is the first time they've loaded him up. Bouncing ball up the middle. Seeger's there. His throw is in time. And Houdini's gotten out of another. Evaldi deals. And gets a chase on another splitter. Two up and two down in the six. Uh, that ball disappears. That's the best one he's thrown all night. Here comes a one-two pitch for Dahl. Takes strike three. Nathan Evaldi with the hardest fought six scoreless innings you'll see. Not an 0-1. Grounds one through. Texas takes the lead. Seager's in to score. Carter stopped at third. And after six innings without a hit, three in a row here in the seventh. Right up the middle. The difference is so far for Texas, what their guy has done other than Garcia. Arizona has not put the ball in play in these crucial situations with less than two outs. And when they did, it was right to the drawn in infield. Gonna have the offense show up. This is gonna be the clincher. Hot shot in the center field. Three consecutive hits in the ninth. The ball gets by. It's all the way to the track. It goes all the way to the wall and two runs score. Heim to third. It's three to nothing, Texas. And then right there, he took his eyes just off of it, thought he had it in the glove. And he just misses the ball. Under it, third, two out. Here's an 0-1 to Simeon. In the air to left center field. Guriel's back. It is gone! Texas on the verge! It's a four spot. It would be a fitting final touch to this run for the Rangers. Well, they've collectively, they've got up off the mat every punch, every scenario. They've been relentless. Third season. It's happened! The Texas Rangers win the World Series! So long to heartbreak. 
Hello World Series for the Texas Rangers, champions in 2023.